Most radioactive material, approximately 98%, is retained within the fuel assemblies. The other 2% is in parts of the core that become activated, such as the coolant or structural materials. For reactor safety, maintaining the structural integrity of the fuel assemblies is key. Due to radioactive decay, heat is generated from the fuel assemblies even after the reactor is shut off or the fuel assemblies are discharged. This heat must be removed in all situations, including normal operating conditions, planned shutdowns, unplanned shutdowns, wet storage, dry storage, and accident conditions. The term defense in depth is used to signify layers of defense. At the outermost layers, we seek to prevent accidents from occurring in the first place. If an accident does occur, we seek to protect both humans and the facility. In the event that protection, does, protection and prevention do not occur, we seek to mitigate and clean up the damage that was caused. There are several sources of energy in a reactor that may be released. The first is called stored energy. This is the energy that comes from the material heat capacity of the components of the reactor itself, such as the heat of the coolant, the pressure vessel, etc. Nuclear transients are another source of energy. These are the power pulses that come from the removal, in part or whole, of poisons, control rods, or other flux inhibitors. This can include the releasing of fission products, coolant or moderator vaporization, or reflector insertion, which happens to keep neutrons in the core rather than leaking them out. Decay heat is the process by which radioactive material decays. Different nuclides dominate the decay heat at different times, depending on their half-lives. Fuel assemblies still produce 7 to 10 percent of their operating power via decay heat immediately after shutdown. This is enough energy to melt the zircaloy cladding in the fuel assembly when the fuel is not actively being cooled. Decay heat is therefore why used fuel must go into wet storage for a period of two to five years at minimum after discharge. Chemical reactions are further sources of embedded energy in the reactor material itself. For example, Zirconium plus two oxygens can go to zirconium dioxide plus some energy, as well as the other chemical reactions that we see here, which also release energy. Many of these reactions can produce hydrogen or other volatile gases, which are then under pressure because they take place within the pressure vessel. A major example of this is that a hydrogen explosion occurred during the accident at Fukushima Daiichi in 2011. There are also external energy sources which may impact reactor safety. This includes natural disasters such as floods, earthquakes, and other large similar events. This term also includes human-caused events, such as an airplane crashing into the containment vessel. There are two kinds of nuclear reactor accidents. Design basis accidents, or DBAs, are accidents which are considered as part of the safety assessment of the reactor in order for the reactor to be built and operated in the first place. Beyond design basis accidents are unanticipated accidents, these are typically very severe because the conditions that cause them are considered rather extreme. The Fukushima Daiichi tsunami was beyond the design basis of the reactors present. The following are some typical design basis accidents considered as part of the licensing of the reactor. Overcooling is when steam is cooled to the point that the flow rate decreases. Undercooling is not being able to remove heat from the core fast enough. This is also called a loss of heat sink, heat sink accident, LOA. Overfilling of coolant is when there is too much coolant or moderator in the core, related to undercooling and overcooling and BWR specifically. Loss of flow or LOFA is when coolant slows or stops moving. This is particularly bad in a sodium cooled reactor. Loss of coolant, or a loca, is when there is a sudden decrease in the mass of the coolant in the primary loop. This is bad for all reactors. 
Reactivity accidents are when there are hotspot formations that may cause localized issues, or can, there can be global power issues such as a departure from nucleate boiling that occurs. Spent fuel or waste breach is when containment or fuel assemblies break or melt, causing a release of material. The reactor containment is the large concrete building that encapsulates the core, as seen here. Radioactivity within the containment dominates how safe the surrounding environment is and how soon cleanup operations may begin following an accident. Denote CIFT is the concentration of the ith nuclide in the containment vessel but outside of the reactor pressure vessel. Also call R sub I of T as the rate at which the ith nuclide leaks into the containment from the reactor pressure vessel. Finally, call alpha sub i the probability per unit time that the ith nuclide leaves the containment and enters the environment. The concentration in the containment is thus given by dci dt is equal to r sub i minus lambda i ci minus alpha sub i ci which means that dci dt is equal to ri minus lambda i plus alpha i times ci. To solve this inhomogeneous equation, first assume that we have a homogeneous ordinary differential equation such that r sub i of t goes to zero. This implies that dci dt equals ri minus lambda i plus alpha i ci of t. The homogeneous version is solved by ci of t equals ci of 0 times e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i times t. Let's now suppose that the inhomogeneous solution is the homogeneous solution multiplied by some unknown factor g of t. Therefore, ci of t equals g of t e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i times t. Now substitute this into the original differential equation to solve for g of t. Doing so yields d dt g of t e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i t equals r i of t minus lambda i plus alpha i times g of t e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i of t. Evaluating the derivative on the left hand side yields the left hand side being e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i of t times dg of t dt minus lambda i plus alpha i g of t e to the negative lambda i alpha i of t with the right hand side being the same. Note that in the above expression the last terms on the left hand side and the right hand side are the same and so we see that e to the negative lambda i plus alpha i of t dg dt is equal to r i of t. dg dt is equal to r i of t times e to the positive lambda i plus alpha i of t. Integrating this yields g of t equals k some constant of integration plus the indefinite integral r i of t e to the lambda i plus alpha i of t dt and we'll note that k happens to be equal to c i of zero. Substituting this back into the original solution we see that c i of t equals c i of zero times e to the minus lambda i alpha i of t plus e to the minus lambda i plus alpha i of t times the indefinite integral r i of t e to the lambda i plus alpha i of t dt. Note that the first term is simply the homogeneous solution once again.